Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ryan Ochoa. I'm with one of my favorite people ever, Adi Shankar. We are on the Bootleg Universe podcast. Enjoy. One of my favorite, I, this is one of my favorite memories now, but I, I, I very distinctly remember you, you saw me across the street somewhere, just kind of randomly in public. And you walked over and you're like, hey, look, look who's following me. And I look and it was like the rock was following you. Wait, I said that? Yeah. I don't know if that's a bad thing. No, it was great. Cause you were, dude, you were genuinely excited, right? Cause you looked up to the rock. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like the oh, rock's, God, the God, rock's God. amazing. Goosebumps and this around, wasn't yeah. like, this was, this wasn't like current rock where, you know, he's, he's like a business mogul too. This was rock when he was a very positive dude that was doing amazing things, right? Now this is, now he's on like a, he's on a different other. stratosphere. This is like, yeah. this is like, you go down in history you know, this is like legacy Mount, rock. yeah, Mount Rushmore of Hollywood rock. Like yeah. th this was different. This was when he was a mere mortal. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> I love that turn. That's great. But so you have a you have a relationship with Dwayne, The Rock. I would, I, yeah. I mean, I I don't. I actually I don't know. I don't know. Where, I don't know where the relationship stands. But uh, you know, if well, you're he, promoting his drink. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's it's my daily fuel, is what I call. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, we're, you know, we're best friends. You know what I mean? No, but you're 26, but, you're 26 and he's, he's like a grown, he's a grown man. There's no way you'd be best friends, but exactly. You know, but he's also a guy who doesn't associate himself even exactly. in a microsecond if he doesn't feel, you know? I mean, the truth is I, and, and I, he knows his team knows, you know, everybody around him knows Still to this day, when he comments or when he likes a post of mine, it's I geek out. You know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's just he it's just oh, it's just like so hard to put into words. The fact that he's seriously, no matter what, everybody knows he's probably one of the busiest people active. I mean, you know what I mean? Like yeah. and he he makes himself look no matter what, even if it, he, he looks like he's the busiest person in the world, more busy than the president. But the fact that he has time to just leave a comment on a post of me, you know, in costume of what, you know, of a short film that I did just to say, you know, LFG, it's epic. I will go on any podcast talking about how this is not just anymore. It's not just a drink. It's not like, oh, it's not Ryan just promoting it. it it's, it's part of who I am now. It's part of me being able to tell you everything that I just told you. It's become a message that he is now feeding me and is now instilling in me right. that I can instill in, in people my age or even anybody. I mean, I was reading comments last night saying, Ryan, thank you. You've changed my life seeing your work ethic. And that's not like, I don't take that for granted. Like that's, but again, it all, it all has to do with I found somebody that is not just, it's not just a random, you know, oh guy, hey, you know, promoting and just like go to the gym. Right. He's he's literally living it, going back to what we said. Mm -hmm. He is proactively showing you on the daily that he's out there doing it. So why not listen? Why not, you know, do it yourself? And that's why, you know, I posted a video on, you know, uh, my post and part of my post was just a video with my brothers talking about how we're, we just went to go see Black Adam and we're wearing his gear and my brother's wearing a Zoa hat. It's, it's, it's part of like who we've become. And I feel like it's, it's made us going back. It's made us just better people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's made us motivated. It's made us driven being able to just go after. And I mean, it's, it sounds probably so cheesy, but working towards our dreams and our goals, you know, because of the person that he is, it's at, it's had such a huge impact on my life and he's had such a huge impact. And now everybody around him, you know, I talk to a lot of people in his team all the time. They're all so like-minded. 
you know, not yeah. just like him. So it's not, you could tell it's not just him. It's everybody he surrounds himself with, which goes back to what I told you. I, I'm, I'm starting that train myself right. of surrounding myself with people that not necessarily are just like me, but hey, will push me and just like, hey, you know, Ryan, this is, I think you should do this. Or Ryan, I think you should do this. And again, going back to the drink, it's, it's now when I see this and I drink it, I just told this to somebody the other day, when I drink this and I hold it in my hand, you know who's behind this now. You can't drink this and have a, oh, I'm going to drink this and, and, and not be motivated or not be a positive person. It's like, no, I have to live by the person that is behind this now. I mean, his signature is wow. on the can. You know what I mean? So by drinking this, it's like, <laughs> I'm excited to go to the gym now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It sounds so cheesy, but that's just what I get from this. You no, know, that makes sense. It, it sounds like you found someone to look up to. Oh yeah. He's definitely, he's, I mean, be, aside from my own parents, which I mean, I'm with them every day and you know, they're obviously have the best for me. My parents, I mean, my dad's wearing a Zoa hat right now. Like my parents are now, you know, listen to the message and, and we all, I feel like have a mentor in the right. family, you know? That's, and, uh, that's you know, great. Yeah. That is great. So I, yeah, he's definitely, yeah. The man. Yeah. Cause I, I feel like there's, there's the potential to take what the rock does and kind of dismiss it and go, okay, come on, dude, self-help, come on. But, <laughs> but, but no, 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 it's actually, it's, it's completely, it's, it's, it's legit. It's completely legit. He's, um, you know, there's a, there's a modern wisdom that it's really, it's not modern wisdom. It's an ancient wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's an ancient, it's an ancient wisdom that he's, uh, kind of brought to modern times and he's kind of showing you how to, he's also a guy that operates with a lot of integrity. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. it's, it's not like that cutthroat business dog eat dog Hollywood, uh, cliche. And I, I, I mean, the truth is, is I'm, I will be happy to always talk about it. I mean, I did an entire, literally an entire promo tour for a film Everybody, it was literally right after he had followed me. So all the, you know, live interviews and all the good morning interviews, they all literally was the number one question. Ryan, so we just heard Dwayne Johnson followed you. Because of that, I, I'm so happy to talk about it and be an example of, I was there and I know the person he is. I have now seen him a few times. He is exactly the person that he, you know, shows you online. It's not an act. It's not a gimmick. It's similar to what you said about me at the beginning. It's like, it's, it's just who he is. And that is what feels just so right. genuine. And he's not apologizing for being who he is, right? Hyper motivated guy, hyper charismatic guy. So it's not like, okay, I'm going to tone down the charisma to, to, to be more, uh, because it, my charisma might trigger other people. More relatable. More relatable. Right. Yes, exactly. No, 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 he's not, not doing that. No, I mean, at the end of the day, you just got to look at it. 300 million followers should tell you something. That's it. I mean, you look at his, his social media, you see 340 plus million followers. If that alone doesn't get you excited and, yeah. and driven to, you know, to do something with your own goals in your life, I mean, I, I don't know what, you know what I mean? So that's why I said, like, I feel super grateful. And, you know, my dad was mentioning to me, the other day, he's like, him and his team, they know, they know the impact that, and they know like how much you look up to all of them. For sure. It, it feels like everyone around him feels like and believes they are, and therefore they are part of a movement. They oh, yeah. feel like, and they believe that they are part of a movement. It's not like, oh, I just, you know, work at a company. It's not like, oh, I work at... Universal, uh, I work at Peacock for, you know, making uh, Universal Studios where I'm in the Peacock division and I'm going to leave and I'm going to go uh, to work at this production company. No, no, no. This is like a destination for people. Yeah, they want to be lifers, right? Because he's got like, what, 300 people on his team a, now? A lot. Yeah, yeah so I, about 300. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it kind of goes in. It's, I just wrote a, a lyric in one of our new songs, um, like not with necessarily with this, but but with the, the, the phrase bigger picture. 
And I feel like his team, which also reflects on what I'm about to say about my family, I feel like they they know and they also feel like they are a part of something bigger, you know? And my family, like that's something that I feel like we also want to, you know, represent down the road is that we yeah. we want to be a part of something bigger as well. You know what For I mean? Sure. And you can't really get there without like, I mean, the the truth is it really goes back to what you said at the beginning about why didn't I leave the ecosystem and, you know, turn into this, you know, person that, you know, whatever. I just know that where I want to go and the person that I want to be and the the legacy that I want to live, you know, I know I can't get there by falling off the wagon and, and going down a dark path, you know. And uh, it's just what I live by. And and the truth is, Addy, I'll tell you, like, sometimes I feel like it's, you know, not hanging out with this person or not hanging out with this group of friends. And I'd be 100% honest. I've, you know, maybe was one, you know, party away from getting this job or one party away from, you know, getting our music in the right person's hands. But I know that that wasn't the right way. Mm. Or that could have led to something bad. You know what I mean? We may have, <clears throat> you know, reached a, a a goal or or got, you know, in the door somehow. But I also know that it's not, we wouldn't have done it like the proper way or the, the with, you know, good values. And that's sure. something that me and my brothers want to literally yeah. always is just do it the right way with good morals and good values as we progress to the top. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. No, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, dude. You wanna, you wanna, uh, you know, not pre prematurely sink your ship mm -hmm. by trying to, you know, leap onto a platform through some sort of shortcut, mm -hmm. only to find out that oh, well, I'm actually now on. I've lost my base. I've lost my integrity. I've lost my sense of self, I'm and what might feel like a, like some sort of jump will actually be kind of the end of it. It's a really a cliff. You've jumped onto a cliff to dive off of. That's a terrible it, it, metaphor. I'm no, it's making, actually making great. up a metaphor it, as I'm going. No, along. it There's actually totally makes like sense. Some and going yeah. off of that, you said like jumping, you know, without like giving away too much of people like, you know, I don't want anyone to like, you know, freak out over this. But at one point years ago, we were invited my myself and my brothers were invited to Justin Bieber's house when, and we found out that he wasn't even going to be there. Mm. Guess what we did? Prayed. Got in the car and drove home. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's just some people will be oh my gosh, you know what I mean? Like that it just it didn't sit right with us. You know what I mean? I was like I rather which ended up working out just you know, a little positive story. I had never met him, obviously, when that had that uh, you know happened. I said, "Look, I'd rather be on a movie set, or I'd rather be you know in the studio." And he walks in, or him, you know, reaching out to you know me and my brothers because he heard our song. I ended up going inviting with. He was actually the director of the film, uh, Dave Angus. Dave was working on Zoolander two. Dave is one of my really good. I mean, he's one of my best friends, mm -hmm. and he was the first AD on Zoolander two. And I flew me and my dad flew to Rome to go visit him. And ironically, Justin was in the movie. He had he. It was when he was filming his scenes. Right. I met Justin Bieber on the set on a private set of Zoolander two because of a of a relationship that I've maintained for over almost 15 years now with Dave. You know what I mean? Like, For and sure, yeah. It just felt, it felt right in that moment. For My sure. photo with him was on a set and we were like, yeah, you know, I worked with Dave on A Christmas Carol and he was working on Zoolander too. Like, it was just cool, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's a yeah. good first moment and a good story to say. Like, I didn't meet him when I was invited to his house and he wasn't there, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's always, it's always better, I find. Like, especially at your age like is you 
26 now. Mm-hmm. I don't Maybe really like talk 20s. about that because again, you know, casting directors might be watching this. Oh, he's 26. I, he, he can't play 21. <laughs> I think you can play older now, dude. You uh, look, yeah, you look, you, I know you're, it yeah, well, exactly. Um, it doesn't matter now. It doesn't, it, yeah. I, I always felt like it was better to meet people in a work context because when you meet people in a social context, right, it, it's like, then meet them in a social context, fine. But it, it, it's weird because when you're in your 20s and you're dealing with this, this, this kind of bizarre world where you have other 20-year-olds that are like massively famous where they can walk into a mall and shut them all down. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little weird. And then you also get the, you also get like the hanger-ons. You know, you get like, that, like, like people have entourages in their 20s. I know. It's a weird thing. Like, I had a freaking entourage. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I had a freaking entourage. Like, it was, it was the, the douchiest. <laughs> Wait, you had an entourage? Yeah. Wow. But everyone had an entourage. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I guess, you, you, well, you did, but you, your entourage was your family. I guess my entourage is my brothers. There's already yeah. a bunch of us. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we show up and they're like, the Ochoa entourage has arrived. <laughs> but I, I feel like things are, things are, you know, things are different now. Just because. I don't, I don't know what I, I, I'm not, I'm not in my twenties now. So I don't, I, I don't quite know. Maybe it's exactly the same and I'm just projecting. I, I, I mean, it's kind of sad, but maybe not really. It's like, I'm not really around crowds like that to tell you, to give you that answer. Yeah. And I only speak on experience, you know, I only speak on, you know, things that I've lived. And so I, I, again, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, the Rock has an entourage, but they're all of like they're all like savvy, motivated individuals who and, are. I oh, mean, he is his companies. It's his companies, and they're all, they and are, all people. They're that, all people. Yeah, that have his back and yeah. that are you know creating. That's for a, sure. That's very important. For sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's that's the that's the disconnect. That's totally it. You just hit the nail on the head, right? There's a difference between having uh, companions or collaborators who you roll with. And there's a shared vision. There's like, you know, we all have each other's backs and the the kind of the the toxic leech thing that gets lampooned constantly. Like, in yeah, like, I'm in a circle. I'm right. you know, they're they're feeding me daily, you know. <laughs> the hanger ons. It's just it's so obvious. Yeah. Well, one of it one of DJ's like main, you know, people is the president of seven is Hiram. Mm. Hiram is with him everywhere. Maya, she's what she's one of the nicest people. Maya's with him everywhere. But guess what? These are literally the heads of his company as mm. well. So not only are they with him everywhere he goes to make sure everything's running smoothly and everything's getting done, they're also literally the ones, they're like the machine behind it. So they're part of the entourage, but they're they're more of the creative team as right, well. Right. It's it's brilliant. Like it's, again, it's right. it's brilliant. And and honestly, there should be a different word because what I, I, I'm using the word entourage facetiously. I'm trying to be funny and it's not working. It, it, there should be another squad. I think there's a word, squad. Squad, squad. I like that word. Squad yeah. is a much better word, squad. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, yeah. again, it also- and, and having a squad to navigate this, this uh, I mean, definitely this industry, but like it's really life is, is it's important. Mm-hmm. It's important. I mean, you've got a great squad, right? You got, and it's not bad. It's like you said, it's not a bad, it's not a bad thing. No, it's a great thing. It's not a bad thing. It's necessary. Just, it's just a matter of who's in the squad. Mm-hmm. You know, my brothers, I mean, I, I, I praise them. I mean, I, and everyone knows like, they're like, wow, you guys, you know, you guys are literally best friends. You talk about each other all the time. I mean, we're, yeah, we work together. Well, but no matter what, like my brother is working right now something like to move the machine. All my brothers are, you know, yeah. one's doing this, one's doing this. It's like, I'm here talking about them. Like it's, it's, it's rare. That's a good word. You know, it's rare, but it's just a matter of who's behind it. What's the goal? What's the mission? How do we get there? And again, I mean, we don't really not necessarily have all the answers because we don't, but it's just a matter of, Hey, Hey, just get one thing done. And I always talk about that. I always, you know, say that, say that to my Ryanators on, on, on live and on Instagram. It's just, just get, you know, one, one thing at a time, one, you know, one thing done a day. Like that's all you have to do. So. Yeah. yeah. And you, you also were into WWE. So this isn't just. We're still am. Still am. Still oh my are. gosh. Yeah. yeah so, we got. 
So, so, so your introduction to The Rock didn't start as like, oh, this is a movie, dude. You, this was as, uh, as like The Rock, The Rock, like the original, like eyebrow, you know, people's oh elbow. No. This isn't, this isn't just, oh, I saw this positive guy who happens to be in movies. You're like, no, no, no. This guy was like. I was imitating him when I was three yeah, years old. Yeah, yeah, okay. He's the reason. That makes sense. You know what I mean? That makes sense. He's the reason that, you know, I'm the entertainer. He's the, you know, we talk about having a personality, like no matter what, him and Stone Cold, Steve Austin, and Cena, obviously, but Cena was the, you know, the next generation or next decade. Them three, they have personality. You know, that's why, I mean, look at The Rock and 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 John Cena. They're mm -hmm. like two of the biggest movie stars now. You, you know wanna, what I mean? Do you want to hear a secret? Yeah. I used to dress up as The Rock and go to high school. <laughs> That's Freshman year of high school, I used to dress up as The Rock every day. Fanny pack up. rock or? <laughs> no, this is when he would wear like these specific Hawaiian shirts and oh, wear sunglasses like, yeah, and awesome. dress pants. Okay. And he would walk around and you just pretend like he had no idea who anyone else was. The little slacks, the nice yeah, slacks. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it was great. It was a great, great period. I was like, oh, in gosh. fact, the first book that I like opted to read that I was like, no, 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 please, please buy me this book because I must read it was was um, his autobiography that he wrote. And I guess it wasn't an autobiography because someone else wrote it, but it was a it was a biography on The Rock called The Rock Says. Wait, we have it. Yeah. I have, I we have it. Yeah, he's on the cover and he's yep, like that. Yep, he's like, and, yep. And and half, half the book is written from the perspective of Dwayne Johnson. The other half is written from the perspective wow, no, of The Rock. I don't think I've read it though. I have to read it's, it now. It's a great book. Um. Mick Foley wrote, actually wrote a book, uh, Mick Foley, Mankind, Cactus Jack. Of course, uh, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, so Mick Foley wrote a book at the same time and I got that book as well. And it was a, you know, it was a New York Times bestseller. It was thick and it was apparently very well written. But the first, the first like two pages were about him getting his ear ripped off. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go read The Rock. Book <laughs> yeah. So, so The Rock, that's, that's great, man. It's but, great. It's yeah, he's, he's a, you could tell he was born to entertain. Ab you know absolutely. What I mean? Like, you. Like, absolutely. So, like, anyone who watched him as a wrestler, it was just super obvious. You're like, <laughs> there's something going on with this guy that he does not belong. Like, like we are lucky to have him in just, this circus. Just give him for, a mic, please. For, like, My <laughs> name is Kane. <laughs> I'm a Rudy Poo. <laughs> like, was like, was, just uh, put a mic in his hand. That's it was amazing. Like, there were, like, entire episodes of Raw that would just kind of be like, okay, okay, okay. And then The Rock would come on. Everyone would be oh like, my God. what is he going to say? What What's he going to say? What is he going to say? I just still, well, I mean, he hasn't been on in a long time, but when like he it, makes his random appearances every 10 years, are you just laugh. It's just so funny. Like he's bashing the new wrestlers. It's just, it, you just know something's going to be said. Like that's what, that's what WWE needs. You know, like that's what. I disagree there. When he comes back, I don't love it. Wait, oh, oh, wait, you don't like, well, I do not love it. Wait, why not? There was magic there before, right? Oh, and you're the magic saying was was there's this guy. I don't know who this guy is. All I know is The Rock. All I know is this guy with sideburns who just does <laughs> these kind of outlandish things that are hilarious. But he's completely he he he, he, he like would never break character, right? Because he was always The Rock. Like oh when, yeah, you know. Um, now it's now cool we've too. now we've peeked behind the curtain. So when he's coming back and like doing True. the thing, he's doing the shtick of The Rock, but it's Dwayne D Johnson now returning to a role that uh, he was beloved for uh, decades ago. And rightly so, right? I'm not, I'm right. not saying like, that, yeah, oh, but he we should come really, back yeah, and exactly. reinvent the wheel and come back. Like, yeah. look, like, he's not Chris Jericho, right? Like, Chris Jericho creates new characters every eight months, nine months to yeah. reinvent himself. The Rock doesn't need to do that mm -mm. Uh, because he's not really in the sphere. He's coming back to give back, which is which is all fine and good. To me, the kid that like dressed up as this dude and thought this dude was real, now I know that dude's not real. That yeah. dude is like a very successful entertainer and a businessman and like a motivational speaker, right? Yeah. What I loved about The Rock as a kid was kind of how negative he was. You know? Oh yeah. <laughs> he was like super negative. He'd be yelling at people off camera. Like, hey, keep it down. <laughs> keep it down. Like, the rock's in the news. And he'd be it like, doesn't matter. You know what, what I mean? mean? Like that was amazing. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Um, and then now he's coming back into this PG environment. 
right? And everything's like highly produced and there's like, uh, you know, there's, there, there's, there's like, there's like mainstream, you know, it's like, like the, the, like the theme songs used to be like heavy metal. Now it's like Rihanna, right? It's like, oh, Rihanna is now going to perform the halftime show. So, um, so are you like not a fan of WWE? Like, it sounds like it's a WWE thing. Are you not like not a fan? Is it just because it's Let's talk so wrestling much- in the next question because this is brilliant. Okay. But it is partially a WWE thing, but it's partially also like there's really only one celebrity that I've ever like cared about and it was The Rock. That's <laughs> and awesome. The Rock as a wrestler. That's amazing. And every time he comes back, it, it makes me realize that I'm growing old as well. That's no. that's the, that on he an emotional level, that's what, time. but on an emotional level, that's what it is, right? It's yeah. like the, the, the audience has changed. It's now kids. It's now for mm-hmm. kids. And it's like, okay, whoa, he's, he's in a, he's, he's doing a nostalgia act for them. He's not, you know, he's moved on to other art forms. 